team, team recorder. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everybody, I'm Sarah and this is Lucy and we are Recorder Players. Welcome to a new section on Team Recorder called The Profiles. This is where I'm going to be talking to other professional recorder players about what they do and what it's like to be a professional recorder player. And our first guest for The Profiles is Lucy Horsch. Lucy is um, a Dutch recorder player and you're 18, so yes. you, you just finished school and but you've been working as a professional recorder player for some years already. Yes, that's true. Yeah, yeah. since I was five, I played a recorder, and yeah, professionally, since I was seven, maybe. Wow. <laughs> well, I felt I played it professionally since the beginning. So, and <laughs> that's I also. A good attitude to yeah, have. no, I think also maybe because my parents were both professional musicians, I always saw it as kind of my professional thing. I started playing in competitions quite young actually. It's not the most fun thing to do, but if you're young you don't really notice the competitive uh, elements, so you think yeah. like, oh it's a concert. Yeah, and then, oh, nice, I'll just yeah. Play. <laughs> yeah. So now you are an official Decca recording artist with a label and you've, your debut CD is already out, which you should definitely go and listen to, I'll put the link in the description. Um, how did all that come about actually? It was five years ago and, and then a producer of DECA came to a concert of mine and uh, we, we had a conversation with my parents and my teacher and then he um, said that they would like me as, as an artist for, for DECA. Wow. Um, you but were, so yes, you were 13 at yes, this point. but then it was a bit early still, or at least I thought it was early to record a CD. Mm -hmm. So we waited with that, and then we, uh, a few years later, I signed a contract and then recorded my first CD. How so, did you choose what would be on your first CD? Yeah, what I didn't know was that um, mm. for um, to make it kind of a successful CD, you need to have a very clear concept, so you can't. Uh, you need to start also with uh, quite a famous composer. The first Thing is actually that you have to know the music very well mm -hmm. and uh, I had played already a few uh, Vivaldi concertos. How, how was that to record a CD actually? What was the process like? Well I didn't actually know what I was going into because I thought that with recording, uh, when the recording was done I had done the difficult part but then yeah. all the editing I also did myself so or not the editing itself but then uh, choosing which take or, oh, or wow. giving, um, so we had the first edit and it was mailed to us and uh, say corrections or here it's, there was a weird sound, um, this uh, wow. transition was not nice, so could you take now? Wow, so see, um, that's amazing because I assumed that you would record it and then yeah, send it me and they too, would actually, it together. Yeah. <laughs> wow. But it was, in the end, I was really glad that I could do it myself. Yeah. But it, it, uh, at first it was difficult because I don't really like to listen to myself because I don't do that often. <laughs> yeah. So it was a really good training at yeah. having to listen uh, to again myself and again all and again. the time. Yeah. <laughs> I want to go back to yeah, practicing. How do, you, how do you structure your practice actually? Um, how is that for you? Well, it's not always very structured. <laughs> But I tried to practice as much as I can. That yeah. was actually, especially when I went to school, it was um, the time I had uh, spent on school. I tried to uh, do my, all my schoolwork well, and then when I came home, it was music. Do you ever have days where you just like, no, I don't want to play anything? Well, that was the weird thing, actually, because I never had time to really practice so much that I didn't feel like practicing anymore. Yeah. I always enjoyed practicing, so I was always looking forward to the part where I could play as long as I wanted. My parents also uh, taught me kind of the discipline, so mm. at, at, in the beginning it was like 10 minutes a day and then they said, do your 10 minutes and then you can do something else. So, okay, yeah. oh that's very, yeah, it's very interesting because I'm trying to work out how to keep my students practicing. Yeah, it's actually more important that you practice every day than that you practice for, for a very long time long time. Yeah. You don't just need to practice very long, just every day. Yeah. Just How do you deal with, say you have a really difficult piece or there's one section in a piece and it's just not working, how do you deal with that? Well, it really depends on the piece, obviously, but usually I, well first I, I play it fast and then I get frustrated <laughs> and then I think and then I play it slow, slowly. Yeah. Um, and 
Well, yeah, it depends. Well, if it's a if it's a fast passage, you can kind of cut it into smaller bits mm -hmm. or um, try different um, different articulations. Mm -hmm. So make it actually more difficult for yourself. So then the normal oh. version feels easier. Oh, that's a good one. Or a trick my teacher has is played in four different rhythms. So you can mm -hmm. play dum da dum da dum da dum and da 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 da. Yeah. And dum da 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 da. And if you do those four, then the normal one seems so easy. Yeah. It's like uh. Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever get stage fright or do you get nervous before you play concert? Still. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't seem like it at all. It seems yeah. like you're like... More people have said to me that I'm very relaxed on stage, but then actually <laughs> I'm completely stressed out. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. How, do you, how do you deal with that? Sometimes I eat a banana before I... But that's oh, more... That I don't helps. know whether that really helps, but <laughs> in my, if I think that it helps, then it helps. Yeah. Oh, I sleep before I go on stage. That I do. Oh, really? Yeah, like yeah I can sleep and work. Is it already like in the dressing room or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah on, on two chairs or... Yeah, oh wow! So. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever been late for the concert because of that? No, no. But I need my parents there to wake me up because <laughs> yeah, sometimes an alarm doesn't work. Have you ever had any disasters on stage? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, for but it's always the weird thing is that when it feels like a disaster for yourself, sometimes yeah. people in the audience don't even know. Yeah. Or notice. Yeah. But then um, I did have something one time where the I played. Bach, um, yeah. the Bach Partita for Traverso, the first movement, and yeah. then the thing of my recorder was turned like this, so oh. there was no last hole. <laughs> da, so, da, I go, da. so I was all the time only thinking, I could only think about the next note where I needed the last yeah. finger, which I didn't have. So I was yeah. completely distracted the whole yeah, the whole piece. and I have a bit of trauma with that piece. So <laughs> all of, if I play it again, then I need to check it's it like, ten times. I can imagine because there's no, there's no rest, there's no like end no, of end no, of anywhere you where you can just no. go. <laughs> yeah, oh, so, no. like, so um, yeah, what do you have with you today? So this is my tenor. Uh, this is from Yamaha. Mm -hmm. mm, nice. And this is a Morgan actually. <gasps> No way! Yeah. And I have one other Morgan. For those of you who don't know, Fred Morgan is seen as one of the greatest recorder makers. But unfortunately, he, he passed away. Um, so his recorders are kind of legendary now. Um, so this is an Alto from Japan, from um, Seiji Hirao. And this is also one of my favorite recorders. It's a Renaissance, it was made by Stefan Bleitzinger. I have the same yeah, one. Yes, I have the same uh, one. It's also my favorite. But I'm really scared it will be because I have it. This is, I. It was my first uh, Renaissance recorder ever, so I yeah. have it now for maybe eight years or something. So yeah. I'm, I'm really afraid that it will. But it still oh, sounds so great. Yeah, I have. I had mine revoiced last summer, and it was like. Oh. This one is not mine, but still a nice recorder. Oh yeah. But it's oh. an ivory um, sopranino. Ivory. Yeah. Wow. Can you? I can't travel with it. So no, I was going to ask you. Yeah. Um, there's lots of. That's kind of scary, almost. Yes. Yeah. So you can play it in Europe, but not, not outside. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This one is maybe 40 years old. Or okay. 40? Yeah. Wow. So very old. Yeah. I'm surprised that the block looks so good. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you um, some favorites. Um, Renaissance soprano or voice flute. I, I love uh, French Baroque music actually, so Montaterre oh. and uh, Filido. That's so difficult. Because it always, always the f my favorite piece is the piece that I'm playing at the moment. At this moment, it's um, the Traverso Partita from Bach. So that's it. Thanks for coming to talk to me, Lucy. I love it. Down here in the description, you can find links to everything that Lucy is doing, her website, her CD, and a video of her playing. So definitely go and check that out. As always, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face down here. And up here, if it all fits, is a link to my last video, which you can go and check out. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye! Bye.